Hi, Froyal here. Welcome to my studio. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create a successful image transfer and then how to use that print for a great collage painting. So first of all, we're going to make some backgrounds for our image transfers. You can also, of course, use stencils to create texture in your backgrounds. Look at that color, that's just beautiful. I love it, absolutely love it. So you might wanna create some marks with some stencils on your background. Easy way of creating some texture. Look at that. That's just beautiful. That'll make a nice background for an image transfer. This image here is quite a strong silhouette. So I'm going to um, you put this image onto this texture background and see how that looks. I think it should look good. We'll see. I'm just using a Payne's Gray color. Uh, it's a Reeves Fine Art paint. It's a very affordable paint. It came from the office warehouse stationery. It's just a student grade paint brand. Uh, not expensive at all and I found that um, it has worked quite well for transferring the images so yeah it's okay you don't have to have any really special paint I think the quantity is more of the what you have to pay attention to more than the paint brand I'm using a Payne's grey because it's dark but I just like the colour more than um, black. So we'll put her down there because this is quite a simple image and most of it is a light coloured background. It won't transfer, just that figurehead should transfer on, being the dark colour. So that's the silhouetted figure there. She looks quite beautiful. There's quite a bit of nice detail there in her face, which has transferred really well. So I'll put my textured background on. Hopefully I can pick up most of that paint. Might need to press quite firmly to get those beautiful fine facial features. Like I said, you don't always quite know what you're going to get. Sometimes it just doesn't work for whatever reason. And sometimes it surprises you and it works better than you think. I think that's what I like about the whole process. It's quite experimental and can be quite fascinating. There we go. There's her beautiful silhouetted profile shot. I think that's really nice. I like that. You can just see here her eye and nose and mouth in the silhouette. And being on that texture background that I did with the stencils, I think that's a really nice print. I'm pretty happy with that. You can see the texture coming through the transfer, which makes it really interesting. It doesn't make it so blocky in color. And this pattern's really quite beautiful. Okay, so I've got my beautiful image transfer, which I absolutely love. I love the texture of the background. I love the simplicity of the portrait. And I'm going to 
make this the focus or center of this particular um, collage. So what you need to do is gather all your materials together and have them surrounding you so that you can be inspired along the way. The way I approach collage is a very intuitive approach. I start with a focal point and then I keep adding papers and textures and paint and other elements until I'm happy with the result. I change things as I go along and rearrange things. I don't pre-plan at all, I just um, create the collage in the process of the development. That's just how I personally love to work within this particular medium. It's quite an intuitive approach and I find it incredibly enjoyable. So I've got a selection of paints in the color tones that I'm happy with. I'm using some matte gel to adhere the papers on. Also some heavy gel or some PVA for the thickest papers. I've got some baby wipes, some scissors and a brush, a selection of papers and collage materials. I also have quite a few other jelly prints. These are previously made prints on the jelly plate and I've just pulled these out of my box because the colors work within the selection of this particular image transfer. So I'm going to use these as well. Also some other textured papers that I have pulled out of my boxes from my studio. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'd like to wrap some colors around the sides. I love doing the sides. I think when your collage is hanging on the wall as you approach it, you want to be just as happy with what you see on the side as the front. So to me, the sides are just as important. And I will start by wrapping some of these um, gel prints in these colors around the side that will match the image transfer on the front. So that's how I like to begin. So the next question is, where am I going to put my image? Am I going to put her directly in the middle or am I going to put her to one side? That's the next question. I think I'm going to put her there. So she's just off to one side, not exactly in the middle. But in doing that, I need to then decide what color am I going to put around her there? Is it going to be underneath the image or on top of the image? So these are all the questions that you ask yourself as you go along creating your collage. I think I'm going to put the colors surrounding her on top of the image so that means I can um, glue her down first which I'm going to use gel medium to do. I'm going to put her just a little off to one side, not directly in the middle. I like that position there. See what she's looking at. Not sure yet what she's going to be looking at. Might move her just a bit more. Put her there. Now you can use an old credit card or gift card to uh, help get the air bubbles out from under the paper. Next decision, looking at my pile of papers, I think I might add some of this. This is a textural paper that I've created uh, using um, pigmented inks onto white tissue. Uh, again, it's very easy to use because it's nice and soft material. I think I'm going to put that there. That looks great. Does it matter if you cover up the sides or change your mind about colors? Because you just have to start. I find by starting with putting some color along the side, it just gets me moving. And as you get moving and start creating, uh, you come up with more and more ideas. So just do whatever it is that helps you to start the process. For me, it's putting colors along the side. Um, but it doesn't worry me if they end up getting covered in the process.
Don't worry if you tear something or something gets ripped or out of shape as you go along in the process because you can fix anything down the track. You can cover it up, you can paint over it, you can add more collage to it. Just don't stress when creating something like this because you can fix it. Anything that you're not happy with, you can fix down the track. You just want to keep going and keep creating. The hardest part is going to be deciding exactly what to put on this and what to leave out. Right, next decision. What am I gonna put here? I think I like the idea of something a bit lighter in tone. Um, I'll probably add something on top of that, but I think I'll start with that for the background. And I've torn the edge this side so it's a little softer. Not so harsh as a sharp cut. Again, I'm using a piece from a jelly print. So when you are printing on your jelly plate and even if something doesn't work the way you'd hoped, uh, keep it. I put everything in boxes. I put them in like um, color tones of boxes, warm colors, cool colors, so that when I'm creating a collage, I can just go through those boxes and find papers that I think will work. This one, I think, got painted a couple of times. It has a stencil underneath which wasn't successful. And then I paint, put paint on the jelly plate and then printed these colors right over the top. So nothing can, is ever wasted. Just put it aside and then have another, go at it another day if something doesn't turn out exactly the way you want. I do that all the time. And then you put it in a box and then when you're creating something beautiful like this, you can pull those pages out and use them. Right, so that looks that looks good. It's a good background. Not sure yet what I'll put over it, but I probably will add some shapes to it. Uh, now, this section here, let's see. I think I'll add this one. I think these colors tone in beautifully. This is actually a gel print just on standard copy paper. I think that looks nice. I like the shape here of that. I think it's mirroring the little shape of color in there. Uh, I tore the edge here so it's softer. And I think that works really well. The hardest part about this kind of collage is actually deciding what pieces you want to put on. Right, so you obviously need some highlights or some areas of interest or some texture. I could do some stencils quite happily. I could add some more textured papers. There's so many options of what I can do with it. Um, that's the hardest part is deciding. I think I need something a little bit lighter to add a little bit of light. Um, I'm liking this textured handmade paper, which I got from the Trade Aid shop, um, handmade from Bangladesh. I think I'm going to put that here. Because that just gives me a little bit of different texture. It's nice and bright and light. And yeah, I'm going to do that. I like that, it just adds a little bit of completely different texture and it's nice and light and bright. And if I decide that I don't really like it, I can always change it or paint over it uh, down the track. But for now, I like it. Now I do like this color here. I think it's beautiful and I love the texture, but I think it's too, right for the overall tone. So one of my favorite ways to knock a color back 
and make it more subtle is to use dressmaking pattern because you get the added bonus of the glorious texture that's on it and it just subdues that color so that's what i'm going to do there uh, i get dressmaking pattern from the thrift shop or the second hand shop and it's fabulous for collage i use it quite often absolutely love the transparency of the texture and the way you can just fix a color like i'm doing right now i mean i love the pattern and color of that but it's just a little too bright for what i want so i'm putting that on it it has that sepia tone and it goes transparent and it also has this fab fabulous line and wording that just creates more interesting shape and texture i love the way it has these lines and words i think that just makes it interesting and i think that tonally that works better with these other colors and it just makes another interesting layer which is what collage is all about it's all about creating layers of texture and color and areas of interest right so i'm not happy with that line there i'd like to do something to extend that and take it off the canvas to expand that composition so i'm probably going to use a similar shape i've got some pages of stencils from these same similar shapes so i've just got to decide do i want to use the same one which is that stencil do i want to use a different one which is similar or do i want to use this one <laughs> i know there's too many options but i'm going to use that to take the color off the edge so it's not so blocked but probably not that big no matter how i cut the paper i didn't end up liking it so i've decided to go with a stencil instead <laughs> we'll see how this goes this may or may not be successful i just want some of them and not all of them well, this is going to be fun See how we went with that. Right, I like this solution better than sticking the paper on. Uh, it's still drying. I put some heavy gel gloss into the bronze paint so that it would be nice and thick shape of a stencil. I really like that. That's why I was putting it on with a palette knife. It was nice and thick and chunky. So hopefully that should dry up nicely. Now I still want to do something up here in this section and I think I need to add some kind of contrasting colour or something that's going to pop and add some more area of interest. Um, the other thing I like to use with collage is serviettes. Now serviettes have two layers. The actual picture and the white paper underneath so you do have to separate those two layers but I was rummaging through my drawer and found this serviette which is rather nice and I could do something with these feathers I'm thinking up in this area here I think the, con the contrasting colour of that little bit of turquoise would pop beautifully against the red violet. And then it's got these um, kind of beigey tones there, would work well with the bronze. So I'm going to do something with this feather serviette. I'm just not sure exactly how I'm going to put it on. So first of all, I cut one of the feathers off the pack it 
was like that. Because um, I think that I need to, if I'm going to put that colour there, I need to put it somewhere else as well. It just makes it a little bit more consistent for the composition. And I like that, like that. And the turquoise is really singing to me on those colours. So then I had to rummage through my pack of gel prints. And I came up with this one that I like. I think I'm going to put it under here because I just am enjoying that turqu adding that turquoise colour. So I'm going to add that like that, I think. The beauty of the serviette is that it goes quite transparent as it's, when it's glued on. Um, so that could look quite good. You don't quite know, however, until you do something and how it dries up, if it was a good idea or not. <laughs> Sometimes these ideas are not so great, but don't worry because like I said, you can change anything you don't like. You can add more paper to it or you can add paint to it. it doesn't have to stay the same way. So if I don't like this once it's dried up, I can then just change it. Um, that's pretty nice. So we'll see. I think I'll just leave this to dry and then see what I think about all those decisions I just made and if I still like them. I added another feather up here. I thought I love the dots, but they were um, dominating too much. So I put another feather over the top. They look fabulous coming through the texture of the paper and I added another feather down here because I thought one by itself was a little lonely. So they're all glued on now, just not quite happy with this edge here. So I might just put a little bit of paint on there, smoosh it around. until I am happy. Little bit of bronze and a little bit of deep violet just to blend that edge so it's not so sharp pretty happy with that how that red violets made that edge blend in better uh, i just have to add one more piece <laughs> one more piece of turquoise i think like there hmm i may or may not cover it with paint haven't quite decided, but I think I would like to add a tiny bit just there. So, oops, so that it balances the composition. Right, it's all dry now, and I'm pretty happy with how this collage has turned out. Um, I love my image transfer. That was the whole inspiration of the piece. These bronze stencil here has worked really well. It looks beautiful in the light. Um, I'm loving the feathers. The feathers just add another element to it. The background colors are beautiful. All of this is working well. I added some birds, little bird bronze stencil to this section because I thought that it really contributed to the feathers. And I like the way she's looking off into the distance and the birds flying there. It's like she's looking into tomorrow and there's hope. <laughs> 
I know, I know, it's all like deep and intense, but really, that's who I am. That's how it feels to me, and that makes me happy. Um, all the sides have been finished really nicely. The colors wrap around the side. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this collage. I really like it. Makes me happy. The colors are pretty, and I think the composition has come together well. That really contributes to that section there. Um, so yeah, that's that. And I hope you enjoyed the demonstration of doing this collage. I love the intuitive approach and the application. Remember, if something's not working, just continue with it. Keep changing it, developing it, adding other elements to it. Try stencils. These feathers came from a serviette. And as you can see, it now mostly dissolves into the background, which I love. Serviettes are fabulous. Remember to take that white piece off the back. Um, how about trying the um, dressmaking pattern if you need to change the tone of something that works really well and um, happy creating and I really hope you enjoyed this demonstration Join me in my studio and watch the full art class on Skillshare. I would love to continue to create with you.